but not but much we, more, James. Right. <laughs> First item of business is the is the approval of minutes for the executive session and regular session. May 18th, we can take the appropriate motion. Move. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Minutes are so approved. Second portion is public comment. And now is the part of the meeting where anyone can approach the committee to speak on any of the items on tonight's agenda. Seeing no one approach, we will consider that portion of the meeting closed and move on to item number three, student achievement, and hear from the superintendent on that. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a few notices I'd like to give this evening, a number of students I'd like to give accolades to. Uh, first of all, uh, a tip of the hat to Salemwood Middle School, which came in first place in Massachusetts in the I Love Healthy Lunch program by having the highest number of students who purchase healthy lunches daily in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, and due to this, one lucky student will get uh, two free Red Sox tickets for the June 19th game. Uh, and the student and his or her guest will get to go on the field while his or her name and school are announced as the official winners. So congratulations to Salemwood Middle School. Uh, secondly, also congratulations to uh, BB School, the entire BB School community. Uh, BB School's uh, Tukatika Marimba Ensemble was rated excellent and number one at the Carousel Music Festival held at the Collins Center for the Performing Arts in Andover on Friday, June 5th. And the ensemble is made up of eight fifth graders, uh, Brenda Boulay, Cody Breen, Chris Brennan, Sajiana Cadet, uh, Angelica Conley, Makara Crowley, Devin Lucy, Christopher Sinan, and one sixth grader, Piero Pocabene. Uh, the group has been rehearsing for this event since October, so I wanted to give them special congratulations for what is now about nine months of hard work to get to this award. Congratulations to the Beebe School. Uh, next, I'd like to uh, give a special note of congratulations uh, to our uh, Malden High School student, Kathleen Lopes Rafferty, who won the New England Poetry Club's Ruth Berrien Fox Award, which is given by the club and the Longfellow House in Cambridge for uh, a poem that she wrote in AP English. She was awarded $100 and an invitation to read her poem at the Longfellow House just yesterday. And some uh, final uh, notes of congratulations uh, to other students and to Malden High School uh, as a whole. Congratulations to Dana Brown and his terrific staff on a wonderful graduation ceremony yesterday at the stadium. 376 students walked across the stage, headed for distinguished colleges, careers, and the service. Uh, congratulations to all of this year's grads. And I'd like to give a special note of thanks and, uh, and congratulations to Mr. Fred Feldman, uh, who is a house principal at uh, Malden High School and has been in service to the district for now, I think, about 437 years, if that's correct, and something close to that. And, and uh, Fred is uh, truly an institution, an outstanding human being, and we will miss him a great deal. And finally, uh, I'd like to congratulate 50, 15 students, I'm sorry, from Malden High who have been awarded summer search scholarships to participate in advanced academic work at Syracuse University and Northfield Mount Hermon on Outward Bound Adventures in Utah, North Carolina, and Minnesota, and uh, uh, participate in international experiences in Finland, New Zealand, Thailand, Brazil, and Italy. Tremendous opportunities for Layla Abdul Nabi, Jayla Abdul Nabi, Amanda Benoit, Laura Botero, Diana Joseph, Dan Ling, Tao Nguyen, Jennifer Vo, Ketsia Favren, Gael Wagnak, Alexandra Mathieu, Brandy Belbin, Ivy Bui, Ji Gao, and Jonathan Sip. Congratulations to these 15 Malden High School outstanding students who are going to have a much more terrific summer than any of us will have. Thank you very much. Superintendent, any questions on the achievement report? Otherwise, we'll okay. Go ahead and file it. Superintendent's report. Okay. 
I have a number of items would like to discuss this evening or present and discuss. First of all, I would like to put forward the uh, Malden Public Schools proposed budget for fiscal year 2010, uh, which was presented last Thursday evening at the budget hearing at Salem Wood uh, uh, School. The total amount of the budget is $48,984,204 which represents a $2 million uh, decrease in the budget for FY09. Um, uh, we had presentation last Thursday, and I would uh, ask that uh, the uh, budget be entertained as the budget for, the f for fiscal year 2010. Take a report from the chairs on the budget subcommittee. Mr. Alcino, Ms. Crow. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Over the last two months or so, in approximately six budget subcommittee meetings, all made public, as well as all the Monday meetings that are open to uh, all members of the school committee, we've deliberated. Unfortunately, we uh, have millions of dollars in cuts, so no matter any, no matter who spoke, including the eight members elected here, we all have our own vision of what's academically appropriate for the students. But uh, the budget subcommittee at our last regular budget subcommittee meeting before the hearing, we came to a, a four nothing vote on approving the said number um, that the superintendent just mentioned. Um, unfortunately. We all had to give in concessions because of the $4 million plus loss in our budget. However, um, we entrust the superintendent in his budget and his leadership team to do what's best for the students in, in this uh, time. So I would ask uh, members of the committee to go on the motion that uh, Mr. Duffy will read for us in a little while that... Uh, for nothing vote to approve the budget. So I want to thank everyone for participating, especially members of the public who had an outcrying of great numbers uh, coming to all of our subcommittee meetings, and uh, they should be proud. And all of us are here for the students, and we'll do our best as we entrust the superintendent to do his best on um, making sure that our district moves forward. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dalton. Ms. Crow, anything to add? Nope. Well, we can take uh, additional questions or comments of the uh, subcommittee report. Or do we want to put the motion on the table? Let's get the motion rolling. And motion and then questions. We can begin the question. Mm -hmm. Do we have a motion? Yes, it does. Uh, the budget subcommittee, by a vote of four nothing, passed the following motion. The budget subcommittee authorizes the superintendent to submit to the full committee a budget with content revisions at a total cost of forty-eight million forty-eight million nine hundred forty. Excuse me, forty-eight million nine hundred eighty-four thousand two hundred four dollars. There's the motion. Questions on the report and the motion. Just the floor. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have a question on the budget, on one, one line item, on page 7 of 8. The in-school in um, suspension supervisor. This current year, this, the salary is 44476 Seven. Page 7. For next year, it goes up to fifty-five thousand seventy dollars. It's an increase of ten thousand five hundred ninety-four dollars. I want an explanation on that. Um, the explanation is that that um, the dollar figure that was used in FY09 was actually ten thousand five hundred ninety-four dollars below the actual salary for that person. You know, as as we hire people for different positions. Um, they uh, come in above or below uh, the projected salary figure, and I believe that that is the difference in, in that particular position. How, how did the fifty? Where did the fifty-five thousand dollar salary originally come from? Is that on the teacher's schedule or? 
the in-school suspension supervisor, I believe, is on the, on the teacher's yes. on the teacher's schedule, and so, so when we hired them, they they were placed on the teacher's schedule. Okay. Okay. Now, one other question. On the same page, the teacher's science teacher leader. Mm -hmm. This for this year, it's zero. Next year, it's. Seventy-five thousand dollars. Did we highest uh, give somebody that position? No, we did not. It was the it was located at, at another um, spot in the in the budget last year when it when it first came in. It was inadvertently placed under central budget, so it did not show up in the actually in the high school budget. So it's really just moving the dollars uh, from one place to another. But there's no change. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Foy. Other questions on budget? Left or right? Uh, it's actually a comment, but first I'd like to start by acknowledging the hard work that the superintendent and the business manager have put in on this budget. Uh, I fully intend on voting for this budget, but I do have some areas of dissatisfaction that I'd like to put out there. I'm extremely disappointed that we are cutting another health teacher from our school district. This is yet another school that will not have health education for our students. And the difficulty with this is that we are not giving kids the basic education in physical development, but also about peer pressure. And these are some of the issues that could develop later on with teen pregnancies, uh, peer pressure into doing unhealthy behaviors or risky behaviors. And I feel that this decision here to cut in these areas, and I know there were no easy decisions, but to cut in these decisions could result in kids getting behind the eight ball now for the rest of their lives and giving them some immense challenges to overcome. And I do think that there were other opportunities where we could have, excuse me, possibly cut. Um, and I know, again, it's just not an easy decision. And I want to uh, also extend my thanks to the budget, sub, budget subcommittee chairs. They did a terrific job uh, with this long process. But just to put it out there, I'm very dissatisfied that we're moving further away from providing an equitable health education in all of our schools for all of our students. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Let me just make sure there are no other first timers, Mr. Correo. Well, my question was the the in school suspension teacher, um, the person who's on the teacher's salary. Is that person a certified teacher, Mr. Smith? Um, to be honest with you, I, I don't know that. It, he is. Yes, he is. He is a certified teacher. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I do want to express um, uh, thanks to the budget committee in working through a, in such a hard um, fiscal environment and, and also uh, working on some compromise with the superintendent related to the, the woodworking and shop teacher. Um, I know that's a hard decision, and we got a lot of public comment on that, so I, I thought, um, I, I mean, it's thoughtful, and I, I also look forward to working in the future to um, – you know, figure out a strategy on how the shops fit into the high school uh, as we go forward. So, um, but but um, I mean, I think that does show that um, we did listen um, to the um, the comments from um, the students and the public. Um, we do think that um, that is an important thing to value, but um, we we do want to see how that fits in the long term uh, educational needs at the high school. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Winslow. Mr. Freud. Yes, sir. First of all, I, I also would like to thank the budget subcommittee for all the hard work they did. But as you all probably know, I'm not too happy about the uh, wood shop point four position. What I was what I was wondering is, are we going to be able to get somebody to teach the point four wood shop, and, and are they going to have health insurance or whatever? Do you have any ideas, um, Mr. Smith? Um, I certainly expect that we will have someone who is teaching uh, uh, that course. It is my understanding that uh, um, I, I really don't have an understanding. I don't know what Mr. Murphy's uh, inclination is at this point in time. Uh, I will say that the question of benefits did come up a, bit er a little bit earlier this evening, and uh, I think we can uh, assure assure whomever is in that position that
benefits can be taken care of, though it would not come out of this budget because this budget wouldn't be altered. It could come out of the uh, out of the uh, uh, the stimulus funds, uh, the stem sorry, the stabilization funds that we receive. One other question: I I wasn't I wasn't able to make the budget subcommittee meeting or the last school committee meeting, but what I wanted to know is. Um, we had somebody had mentioned setting up a committee, a vocational committee, and I would definitely like the volunteer to be on that committee. Thank that would, you. That would be great. Mr. Hare Rogers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Proyer. I'd like to echo what um, the other school committee members had stated regarding the hard work that the budget subcommittee has done. Um, I know it was hard choices, hard decisions made by the superintendent of what to choose and what not to choose across the board, even in the schools. Um, I also echo the concerns and also um, say thank you for at least some consideration for the um, woodworking class and the arc ed classes that are being considered and support the superintendent's recommendation to go forward with a subcommittee to more or less revisit the whole program and what needs it offers to our student population. Um, hopefully, some additional funds will come in. Hopefully, some grant money will come in that maybe may assist with the health teacher that is in dire need through our district. Maybe Healthy Malden could come forward with something that may assist some sort of programs that could educate some of our students. Um, something will give for that health um, teacher. So thank you, the Budget School Committee, for your hard work and superintendent. And hopefully the um, council will support. And they will never give us more, but they won't give us less unless mon um, a report comes forward that we have less money to work with. So thank you. Other questions? Let's talk in. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, also, just thank one you, quick Chairman. question, um, clarification more than anything. Um, page 11 of 16, number 6,000. The alternative high school, um, are we still, uh, will you clarify how that, we, it's 11 of 16. Um, we have it in the budget for 90,000 again this year? Yes. So are, have the plans changed from what it, we originally it thought? It will remain where, where it's located now. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Other questions or comments? Mr. Chair will make a comment. Uh, number one, thank you to the committee members, especially Mr. Altrino and Ms. Crow, for the good leadership on getting the system to the point where it's at, together with the superintendent's effort at rolling out a very lean and uh, and uh, relatively great effort at trying to respond to the early numbers that we believe were available on the city side for funding. Um, it's probably maybe one of the only years, if the only year, that I will actually vote um, in favor of the budget, together with the entire committee. Um, it is a number that I will uh, submit to the city council for approval, and uh, I do hope that they will Improve, approve in kind, although there is no guarantee. There's still a lot of deliberation that has to be done on the community side around local aid and the resources that are available to the entire city for the construction of a $130 million plus budget. But I do think this is a, a very good effort, and I, I appreciate the work of the administration and the committee members. The one caveat that I will uh, draw to your attention. It was touched upon by Ms. Rivera Rogers. We are anticipating, and I know that the budget here is built on the fact that there are um, the uh, Recovery Fund Act uh, monies that are anticipated flowing from the Patrick administration, and each branch of the legislature has, in fact, voted to release that money. And for Malden, it means approximately uh, $1.6 million in additional resources. Those funds do have to show up in order to be able to sustain this budget uh, above and beyond what the uh, city uh, allocation ends up being uh, ends up being voted. 
So just keep that in the back of your mind. We, the expectation, and I think the reliability of the fact that they will come is uh, high. But we just want to make sure that uh, until the deliberations are finalized and at Beacon Hill, we won't know uh, that the money is in hand. I think there's a very good likelihood that uh, we'll be able to build a budget around it. So thank you again. Uh, in a very tough year, I think you've done some very good work. And hopefully next year we'll have better choices to make with uh, uh, with better resources. But on the motion, a second for Mr. Duffy's motion to approve the budget as uh, recommended by the superintendent and the budget subcommittee. We need a second. Second. Second by Mr. Winslow. Call the roll on the budget motion, please. Can I just... Uh can you just repeat that motion? Yes, ma'am. The Budget Subcommittee authorizes the superintendent to submit to the full committee a budget with content revisions at a total cost of $48,984,204. Is there Mrs. Crow? Yes. Mrs. D'Angelo? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Mr. Foyle? Reluctant. Yes. Mr. Ivino? Yes. Mrs. Rivera Rogers? No. Mr. Altrino? Yes. Mr. Winslow? Yes. Mayor Howard? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's the 2010 budget. Next item. Thank you very much. Um, the next item uh, has to do with the uh, strategic plan, the long-term strategic plan for the district. Uh, um, I wanted to update for all of you on the progress we have made on the plan. Uh, to begin, the final plan uh, will include the, a number of components uh, as determined by the strategic plan committee, and uh, all of you should have the names of all of the participants on that committee. Um, and the uh, the core the elements are core value, mission statement, vision statement, goals, and objectives. Uh, in March and April, there were a number of meetings among the members of the strategic plan committee uh, to come up with a draft core value, mission statement, and vision statement. Those three items were sent to each of the schools, uh, and the schools' leadership teams and representatives of the parent councils met and uh, submitted revisions to those uh, three elements, to the core value mission statement and uh, vision statement, back to uh, the strategic plan committee. Uh, upon receiving those revisions, the uh, committee uh, finalized at least the final draft of a core value mission statement and vision statement, which are included in your package. Since that time, the district-wide leadership team has been meeting to uh, revise or update uh, new goals for next uh, school year as well as um, uh, objectives that are aligned with each of those goals. We are in the midst of that work now. We, uh, as recently as this afternoon, met for a few hours to work on that and are coming close to closure on identifying those goals and objectives. Once they have uh, been identified, and I think in your package you have a copy of the goals that have been finalized, it's the objectives we're working on now. Uh, once they have been finalized, they will go back to the Strategic Plan Committee for its final review and comments to be submitted to the school committee. The school committee at that point will be able to deliberate and either approve the plan or make a recommendation that uh, it needs some revisions and send it back to committee. Um, I hope to have that work done or expect to have that work done by the end of the summer so that we can present the uh, plan to the committee at its first meeting in, in, in the new year. I did make note in, in my report to you that I do think that there were two, were, uh, two particular areas that uh, merit some additional consideration on, a part of, on the part of the, uh, the uh, strategic plan committee, uh, particularly in light of the current fiscal condition and um, conditions in the district. And those two particular areas have to do with, first, financial resources development, and secondly, internal operations efficiency. I think both of, the, both of these areas are of increasing interest and concern, and we need to have some more particular uh, uh, goals and objectives aligned with each of those. 
I also will invite the uh, members of the school committee who are on the strategic plan committee as well as anyone else on the committee who would uh, uh, like to sit and to uh, deliberate over some goals and objectives in those two areas. I will invite uh, them, you and them, uh, to a meeting sometime during the summer so that we can do just that. So that by the time the summer comes to close uh, and members of the committee may in fact reject my proposal that, that these two areas be considered. But if they are considered, ho hopefully they'll be a part of that, that final draft of a strategic plan that will be submitted to the full committee at the end of the summer. So I, I hope that we, uh, and I have strong hopes and am confident that we will have a, a, a very good draft of a full strategic plan to the committee to open up the next school year. Would like to entertain any questions or comments? Questions or comments on the report on strategic plan? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, a few months ago I made a motion to have the superintendent, um, since our current strategic plan was expiring this year I asked him to put a committee together he has done so um, from the list of names it seems that every aspect of the community has been involved I've been following the emails and back and forth and um, the proposals and they're excellent so I just want to commend the superintendent especially the strategic planning committee they seem to be hitting in actually agreeing on almost every aspect of the budget which is not always the case so uh, I want to thank you and I look forward to the final document thank you, thank you and it was not always the case in the meetings I right <laughs> Mr. Winslow? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to express my interest in, uh, in coming to the meeting in the summertime, um, depending on my, upon my schedule. And the, the one comment I, I would have, and, and maybe this really fits into what the additional uh, ideas the superintendent would like to add, is that one of the things we might want to think of is actually having a part of the vision as to how the committee fits into that. Well, that was one thing I, I thought was overlooked a little bit of where the, this committee fits into the this, with the students and the schools and that type of thing, and maybe, maybe the type of things that the superintendent has talked about is actually some roles the, the committee um, itself can get involved in as well. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Lynn. Ms. Crope. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Unfortunately, because of you know my schedule, I didn't get a chance to make it to all the um, the strategic planning committee meetings although the ones that I did go I think people were really very engaged and um, really did a lot of wordsmithing everyone's opinions were kind of brought out so I think the the plan that he has to put together is um, very well done and so I really support I do like the two um, other uh, additional consideration that you had put forward and um, appreciate actually Mr. Winslow's um, thoughts on where we fit in to the strategic plan. So I look forward to working further on this with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Other questions or comments? Chair would recommend that material that I sent around. I don't know if we got it all, but the mm -hmm. Mass Inc. executive summary on 15 years of mm -hmm. education reform. I think there are some very good points in there, especially in relation to strategic plan building, um, assuming some of the information is relevant to our current system and some of the points made. Next slide. Okay, final item, uh, which I bring to you once again, uh, is the school calendar, which we have had a difficulty in resolving. Uh, it came, it, uh, was recently brought to my attention, a concern was recently brought to my attention by um, President Gonzalez, president of the uh, Malden Education Association, and uh, other members who were involved in negotiations last year that the um, two Jewish holidays were identified during negotiations for the school closings, the first day of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Um, it remains my understanding bit different from that, but that one holy day was identified for closing, but that observers would have the opportunity to have the single holy day off as a holiday and use personal days to take one or both of the other holy days off without penalty. If you remember, we uh, said that uh, uh, observers would not have to pay for a substitute teacher. At the same time, we had 
the uh, stipulations that in the schools there would not be there would be no tests and homework what have you um, on those particular holy days. However, uh, whereas we identified uh, the first day of Rosh Hashanah as being the holiest day or the single uh, holiday to be observed, yes, I believe we did. Mm-hmm. If we did, okay. Um, after checking with a number of districts and also with uh, Ms. Gonzalez, it was, uh, we were informed that Yom Kippur is the highest of the holy days and should be the single day that is observed. So, uh, regardless of where we started and where I would like to end is that we do observe Yom Kippur as, our, as the holy day that we treat as a holiday uh, in the Malden Public Schools. Questions on the report on the school calendar. Ms. Vera Rogers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is not, not a question, just a comment. Um, since we, we, we reviewed this, we studied this, we did our homework, we did surveys, we did phone surveys, we did all this work um, last year. And the numbers that we got were what we put in force last year in the school calendar. Now, with this being said, in this research and homework and discussion that has been made regarding Yom Kippur, is this what we're going to have etched in stone, or are we going to go through this process again next year when the other days come up in the calendar? So if we're going to vote on this calendar this year, maybe we need to have further discussion and, and do what we have to do so that way we're not going back and forth every single year. So I do support myself this year's calendar, as said by the work that you did, but then I think we need to make it known that this is the day that is going to be observed and not change it to the other days. So if this is the suit that we're going to follow with this. I would just I would just say that it's my proposal that this becomes the the holy day that is celebrated as the holiday in the Malden Public Schools henceforth. So with that being said, I do accept that. But next year we will not revisit this. Oh, I am not comfortable with the fact that we're not going to revisit this next year. Uh, when it comes to Good Friday, when Roman Catholics have that opportunity to observe that religious day, they don't have to use one of their personal days. I look at the contract, and I see that personal day is a, is a day that's reserved for business that cannot be conducted on any other day. And while, yes, it is a religious observance of a holiday, the first day of Rosh Hashanah, I look upon that in the same way as I look upon Good Friday. And since we don't have to worry about using a personal day on Good Friday, I would be opposed to not being able to revisit this next year um, and um, to invite community comment on it. I appreciate the work that's been done. I know that surveys have been conducted. Um, However, as I go to some of the schools, I'm told that not all of the paraprofessionals or teachers in in at least one particular building were contacted or had an opportunity to... um, to partake of that survey. So, no, I'm not comfortable with the fact that we may not revisit this next year. Mr. Froyo. Thank you, Mr. Ayavino. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I I agree with Mr. Ayavino. I think we should maybe take this from year to year. I don't don't think we have to etch it in stone for every, every year from hence, you know, from now to forever. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Froyo. I'm sorry, Mr. Winslow. Um, yeah, I, I just one of the I have a question for the superintendent. I mean, one of the things we did last year in 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 you know eliminating one of the holidays was also to offer an additional personal day. How how is this? I mean, are are we still this year going to offer you know, two personal days without a requirement for substitutes, and then the third one? You'd have to pay. You'd have half. Is that the, the status going into this next school year? Is that our understanding? That, well, that's. I mean, I, I, if, if if Yom Kippur were observed this coming year, since the uh, first day of Rosh Hashanah falls on a weekend, um, 
a, an individual could take Yom Kippur, uh, or would have Yom Kippur off, I'm sorry, and um, is the second day of Rosh Hashanah also on? They're both right. on a weekend. Yeah. So, so this coming year, uh, all three the holidays would either fall on a weekend or it would be a day off from school in any case. So, I, so I guess no one would have to use a personal day on any of these three days. I, I guess the, I mean, I mean, we are, you know, uh, I mean, my thought, on, at least relating to the personal days, and, and one reason many institutions have personal days is so that the institution doesn't have to decide what are holy days or not. Um, then it's up to the individual person and their own beliefs to decide what is the highest holiest day. I, I mean, I, I guess for me, I'd like to have the clarity as to. I mean, if we have, whether it's, you know, I mean, if we have Yom Kippur being that, that day, that we still have the policy that there be two personal days that can be taken without any question, and then, you know, one that has the half, uh, you, you have to pay half, and that just be the standard going forward, whether or not, the, you know, the, the, it, it, we, so we don't have to revisit it every year, that that, that we just do have it that way um, I mean that would be be my preference that um, that you know it, it is a challenge I mean it, I looked at you know school districts across the country are struggling with this and one way to handle things like this going forward is to have personal days that people can take off without question and that that there are, is this flexibility for taking off the religious holidays I, I think our our conclusion on Good Friday was that we simply could not operate the school system effectively because we couldn't get enough substitutes to cover for the teachers. So I think there's another reason there. But we could cover these other holy days um, if people do take personal days off. So um, so my preference is along the lines of um, Ms. Rivera-Rogers is to, if we're going to say Yom Kippur, uh, and at least I, I did see that in Rhode Island the, the council of the, the the Jewish council there did say that Yom Kippur is the highest holy day. So there, the, you know, I didn't see something comparable in Massachusetts, but at least a you know a, a Jewish religious body is saying that um, if, that we recognize that as the highest holy day. That um, that that be standard going forward, and we and we do not revisit this each time, and that we keep our that as our the holy day and and the personal date fixed from going forward. That would be my preference. So. And just to clarify, we do have those two personal days, and whereas in the past there was a penalty, if you will, on the second day that a, a person who took a second personal day would have to pay for a substitute teacher, that is no longer the case. Well, before, Ms. Abby, before I get to you, let me uh, cover some more members of the committee, if you don't mind. I thought I saw Ms. Thank you. Ms. Doc Angel stand up. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Winslow. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as you said, this year we don't really have to do much because the other two holidays are on the weekend. But when you say that there's no penalty, financial penalty, to for a personal day, does that include all staff or just teachers? Does it include paraprofessionals, um, clerical staff? Yep. I'm sorry. All, yeah, all, the paras also get the two personal days, and there would not be a sub that they would have to pay for. So there's no penalty. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Dyke. Ms. Crow, and then Mr. Dyke. <clears throat> Since in your memo you said, um, to, talked about the negotiations, is it written in the contract what day, or are those are the just kind of, so we didn't really make a decision um, with the contract? No. Uh, is it written in the, in the language of the contract which days? No, it's not written which day. That's not included in the contract. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Duffy. Thank you, Ms. Crow. Uh, perhaps I heard the superintendent wrong, but I'd just like to offer a clarification and then comment upon some of the other uh, issues that were brought up. But my understanding was that we had done a rather extensive survey of the other school districts in the Commonwealth, and while we didn't have them all respond to our survey, we did get a significant number, and it was based upon uh, the best practice or the popular practice out there that we chose Rosh Hashanah to be the day that was given off. Uh, there was no ignorance on the part of the school committee as to which day was the holiest day for the Jewish calendar, just to be clear on that. As far as revisiting the issue year after year, uh, you know, as much as it would be great to have this set in stone and know 
from year to year what it is. I see no problem with revisiting it in a district as diverse as ours and with the pluralism of religions and countries of origins, there are going to be issues that come up every year that we need to think, for, think about in regards to the calendar. So I think we should remain open to that uh, possibility and revisit this every year. And just last point, I'd, I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Gonzalez for bringing forward the issue about Yom Kippur being the day of choice by a lot of the teachers and uh, paraprofessionals in the district, and I think it shows uh, great intelligence on the part of the school committee to adapt to this new input and change the day. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Duffy. Ms. Zabber. Um, I agree with Mr. Duffy, and also, I was wondering, so next, this year, Rosh Hashanah doesn't fall on, falls on the weekend, he says, so next year we wouldn't get any either day off if it does fall on the calendar? Only Yom Kippur? Okay. So, I'm Jewish, and I know that you don't get homework. We, that if, if you do celebrate the holiday of Rosh Hashanah, that you don't get homework or tests. But you still have classwork that you have to make up, so it still leads you to a disadvantage. So I would just like to say that I think maybe we should reconsider having one of the days of Rosh Hashanah off. That's just my idea. All right, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, are you going back? Yes. Ms. Vera Rogers. Thank you, thank Mr. You, Ms. Ever. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank all the um, school committee members for their input and, um, and their concern. Um, I do appreciate the fact that we want to revisit this every single year, but as we discussed during our process and all our meetings that we had, if we keep on going back and forth on holidays, it defeats the purpose of us honoring just offering one holy day um, and having it. That's how come we just had our discussion regarding there would be no homework assignments being given, that you could have to use your two personal days. Everybody has the right to use their holy days to their own preference and whichever. We have many, many observations of different holy days. So we were just really focusing on the fact it's, it's about the students being in class. It's about addressing their their learning, everyday learning. We're not focusing our school calendar on, on um, observing everybody's holy day. Everybody has the right to observe, but you have the right to observe um, on your own time. Um, I can't, you know, that, that's the reason we were talking about the loss of education on a given day, and that's why Good Friday is on that calendar permanently because of the loss of education, there wouldn't be enough staff to cover the day for the students. So um, I am willing to revisit this every year, but I think um, we need to focus on student education. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Vera Rogers. Um, well, from the chair, it seems as though we are visiting this topic every year. So. Um, I don't know why we would break our tradition next year, but um, I do have a concern, though. Number one, we voted a policy. There's nothing wrong with revisiting the policy, thinking that maybe we missed the target on the policy, but I do agree with Ms. Rivera Rogers. We should either decide once and for all that one of these days is the most important day to the Jewish faith, to the best of our our ability to be able to do that and, um, and be able to know that in each succeeding year that the system will recognize that uh, very day. Um, I, for one, uh, I'm hoping that what, what, not what we're talking about is, um, is uh, holy day shopping here, so that when the calendar rolls around next year, we're taking a look at which one shows up on a school day and uh, we intend to change. I, for one, uh, am not in favor um, of that kind of reconsideration on a yearly basis. Um, I think we've made a good faith effort to vote the uh, correct uh, and most appropriate day last year. Uh, I'm more than glad to get the additional information, as Mr. Duffy said, and uh, make sure we reconsider and try to get it as right as we can. And I think, by the way, we do need a motion and a vote because it was a policy decision that was made. So we should take that vote in reaction to this information this evening if we're going to change. But I, for one, uh, am uh, 
for the point that if we're going to make this change, this should be it. And each year, the calendar should have this specific date uh, built into it. Um, and whether or not we consider any others is something we can always take up, um, whether it's new faiths or, uh, or additional information about other dates. But uh, this should be an established date, just as Good Friday is uh, on the Catholic calendar. So that's the chair's observation on the effort. But, but it seems as though we need a motion to have the calendar uh, for 2009-2010, uh, the policy to have that uh, Jewish holiday observance changed from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur. Mr. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah, I, I will make that motion that the, um, the school calendar that it be the policy of the Malden School Committee that the school calendar reflect um, and honor uh, Yom Kippur as a uh, day day of no instruction. Seconded by Mrs. Second. Brett Wright. Okay. Any other discussion? Yeah, like Ms. Daltrin? Yeah. As I've said since this was discussed the last eight months, we as elected officials, I feel, have no right to tell the people of the Jewish faith or any faith, depending on the holiday, when they should celebrate their holiday. And the original vote on the, was a vote of 7-2, to two, the mayor and I voting no. Um, so I just caution the members of the school committee, it's passed the last two times we voted on this calendar. I think we voted on this calendar more than we voted on any other issue this year. And I don't think it's anything that we should be proud of. Um, as I've said since September, October, whenever it is, we have no right at all to tell people, especially when most of us are not of that faith, when they should be celebrating the holiday. Whether you took a survey of a thousand rabbis or synagogues or school districts, we're unique from any other school district. Um, and again, we have no right to tell them the first day is more important than the second, the second is more important than the first, especially when I have no knowledge of that. So I think it's poor practice if uh, the school committee starts dictating, uh, since we've been celebrating these holidays for 60 or 70 years, if not longer, um, when they should be celebrating holiday, whether they have five personal days or two personal days. It's poor practice to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Altrin. Mr. Ivino. Just do you know what Mr. Altrin is Okay, on the motion to uh, so change the policy for the upcoming school year, uh, there's enough debate around this so that we'll call a roll on it. Get a roll call. Please. Mrs. Carl? Yes. Mrs. Doc Angelo? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Mr. Froyle? No, can I clarify that this is just for the upcoming year? Yes, this is yes. for well, no. just about, I'm sorry. It's, it's changed the policy. It changes the policy. The policy can always be amended by the appropriate action in the future, but this makes the policy. Change my vote to no. Okay. Mr. Ivino? No. Mrs. Rivera Rogers? Yes. Mr. Altrino? No. Mr. Winslow? Yes. Mayor Howard? Yes. So change. And the calendar will be so built around it. Yes. Right, so can we vote on the calendar? Uh, we have the, so that takes care of the issue of the uh, day, the particular day. Um, we have the calendar before us as well. And it is in your packet of information. Any questions on the remaining dates of interest in the calendar? Otherwise, we can take a motion and act upon it, but... So moved by Ms. Rivera Rogers. Seconded by Mr. Winslow. Any discussion? All in favor of the calendar? Roll call, Mr. Chairman. A roll call on the calendar. Thank you, Mr. Mrs. Crow? Yes. Mrs. D'Angelo? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Mr. Foyle? Yes. Mr. Iavino? Yes. Mrs. Rivera Rogers? Yes. Mr. Altrino? No. Mr. Winslow? Yes. Mayor Howard? Yes.
calendar finalized until a new one is voted. Mm -hmm. so. That'd be the next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> the next time. Yeah. Deliberations. Going back to five. Four. Four. No, we did Or oh, filling vacancies, yes. That was, we're still in the uh, superintendent. That was part of the superintendent's report, so we haven't. We're just getting to number two. <clears throat> vacancies. Handle. Report on that handle. The strategic plan report was also uh, given to us, and deliberations. Subcommittee updates, we've heard from the budget subcommittee, we just did a little bit of policy. Any other subcommittee chairs have anything to add in June 2009? Yes? No. Item number six, the consent agenda, the approval of transfers, as Oliver has included information in the packet. If anyone has any questions on it, we can ask questions. Otherwise, it motion to move. So moved by Second. Mr. Altrino and Ms. Crow. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting schedule as well as the calendar is uh, included there. So the clerk has given you an effort to put together some meeting dates for the 2009-2010 period we can take it up now we can vote it next uh, at our next meeting before we leave but just I, you know. yeah just a, a question on the calendar uh, I, I supported Mr. Trino's motion and I still support the two meetings a month but I was wondering until our workload really becomes heavy if perhaps in September or October uh, if our workload isn't heavy depending upon the workload that we could stick to that one meeting for those two months and as the work progresses We'll go to the two meeting schedule. I don't know how anybody else feels about that. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Altrino. I, I agree with Mr. Riavino. It's, I just don't know financially if we're going to get any updates, and I, I'd leave that up to the superintendent if we're going to get any updates after June 30th. Where we may not even be in, we may have to go in session sometime in the summer, depending on. Um, uh, the Senate's version, or if stimulus money or stabilization money doesn't come or does come, and that number changes as revenue streams change in the state, um, yeah, I, I think next year is going to be a very shaky year. Um, so it's again, it's up to the committee. I think um, two meetings a month the last couple of months have done very well for us, um, especially with the public comment. And we may, might see a lot of changes next year, depending on the final number and depending on the decision we made um, on the budget. There, there might be some problems um, that the superintendent may have to report on and get approval from the school committee because of the number that we voted. But I might be um, on, on the lone one on this one, but I would – October only has one meeting as uh, – on Schedule B, October 19th. So um, I would tend to see how the summer deems well for the superintendent to notify us on the 14th of September, and we can take it from there. But um, it's not a policy. Therefore, if the school committee in the middle of the year decides that they don't want two meetings a month in January, then they have every right to do so. But I would stick to uh, Schedule B, as noted, especially for next year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Altrino. Other questions um, or comments on the... I, I do know that... Uh, oh, sorry. It's just the one. Okay. Yeah. Um, September 28th is, is Yom Kippur. I, I don't know if, if whether we'll be meeting after sundown on the 28th, which because the holiday runs from sundown to sundown. So we, we, we may... Uh, I, I guess we'd have to find out. I don't know... It, is that a conflict on the 28th or not? Yeah, that should be done. Yeah. The 28th? All right. So that would be an amendment to Schedule B. We'd have to change the date of the 28th. Shop eyes by Mr. Winslow on the calendar. Thank you. There's one at least issue of conflict. 
Other points, uh, questions on Schedule A versus Schedule B. Uh, the Chair will provide one point of information regarding meetings that have to be held in reaction to what may uh, be final figures that come out from the State House. We will always consider calling a special meeting, mm -hmm. if necessary, over the July and August months. So, so that's always an option that we have available to us. Other questions or comments on the two proposed schedule? Yes, sir. Mr. Duff. A brief one. I'd just like to speak in favor of Schedule B. I do believe that it's very important that we meet twice a month. I would love for the day to arrive when our workload is alleviated enough that we could meet once a month. But uh, for starters, we should keep with the two a month. That way we can tackle everything as it comes up. As uh, School Committee Steve Altrino noted, there's only one meeting in October anyway. September, I would assume that there is a number of issues that we'll have to deal with. So all the way through to November, I think the schedule is perfect as set. So in my opinion, I think we should be staying with the twice-monthly meeting. Thank you, Mr. Duffy. Other questions or comments? No. Mr. Vera Rogers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have to agree with the other um, school committee members, Mr. Altrino, Mr. Duffy. Um, since we went, well, since we put into practice this year as a school committee to meet twice a month, we should just be consistent and continue on with that. And if we have to meet more, fine. If we have to reschedule something because of circumstances, so be it. But schedule B. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Vera Rogers. Other questions or comments? Points of view? Is this something you need a motion on? Well, we, do, it, we do want to uh, set the schedule. So, mm -hmm. so we can always uh, defer action until we get back here in September. But depending upon how much lead time people like to have and scheduling their own personal calendars. The superintendent. Well, I was going to say, it's going to obviously need to be revised in any case. Because the 28th. Of the, uh, the 28th. Um, if you want to have the frequency of meetings that you've talked to in Schedule B, that might be moved to October 5th, which will then allow um, to alternate right, alternate Mondays um, through uh, September and October. We can hold it, to the next, hold it to the next meeting. You can also. Yeah. Let's hold it until the next meeting and get some reaction to it. And we'll vote our meeting schedule at that point. The vote on school choice, the uh, information is in the packet. This is an annual vote that has to be taken according to general laws. Moved by Mr. Iovino. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Rivera Rogers. To not is the vote. The superintendent's recommendation is to not vote school choice. To vote the superintendent's recommendation. So you're voting yes on the recommendation, which is a negative vote on the statute. So we would not be opting in to region-wide school choice by voting the superintendent's recommendation. Just a point of clarification. Mr. Altman. How many years um, have we voted against school choice? It has to be many, correct? Every year. Almost every year since... Since it's been enacted. Since it's been enacted. 1991. Okay. Thank you. Have we ever considered... Have we ever considered... Um, okay, if we, if we didn't have... If we had school choice... Have we ever in our district considered having school choice? Um, would well, we it be consider it more every staff? Year. I know not. I'm, clarification. If we were open to other students coming from other districts to our, to our schools, would it be additional paperwork? Would it, would it make it difficult if we, had, if we were open? Have we ever discussed that? Or, you know, is, is there ever the option? If, are you asking, has I'm there asking. ever been an in-depth study on the yes. consequences of voting in the affirmative vote? Right. Uh, that I can recall, no. Doesn't mean there shouldn't be, but I don't, don't know how much 
information has been uh, put together to try to draw out the pluses and the minuses. Other than it, on its face, I guess, in you know, the superintendent having a much longer lead time in uh, education in Greater Boston, I mean, my sense is that it would require an enormous amount of tracking uh, students flowing in and out of, in and out of the district, uh, transportation needs that attended, you know, my guess is well, we it, have them flowing. it's work. Yeah. Right. Well, no, in our own district, we have them flowing. In and out, we don't have it as a policy choice. Um, so it probably gives you some concerns about trying to target your population each year. I don't know by dates by which people have to notify you that they intend to, if you're in a school choice plan, uh, notify the, you that they intend to opt into your district. Uh, well, the, the, there is a, a huge amount of work that would be associated I with it, but I think, I think mo most, of, most importantly right off the top is we would begin to displace Malden students from their schools of choice. Uh, because we are so filled in each of our schools. We currently have students or parents of students who come into the district and they want to choose one school, but it's close to them just because it is full. If right. Were we to uh, be engaged in this, uh, we would in increase the possibility that that would happen to additional Malden students, residents. Okay, but if there were seats, if there were seats available, say if there were seats, okay, Malden students first and seats avail available, like transportation, if there's available seats, we fill the seats. You know, is and if we got reimbursed from that school district, we're talking reimbursement. It wouldn't be you just walk in and register and come to our schools and we provide, you know, the the educa educational dollars. But if we were reimbursed by the said school district, because as you know, and I think all districts suffer through students that belong in another district come to and go to another district but without being compensated. So if it was done with compensation, that would be more open and people wouldn't be trying to go to a school that they want to go to um, with a residency affidavit and um, not be reimbursed. Well, right. I mean, that's the, what I'm just curious. Yes, the opportunity ever. would exist. The um, I guess my, my major concern is the also the transient nature of, uh, of our population. Mm -hmm. We are sixth or seventh um, highest rate of transients in the state in, um, among urban urban districts. So, and what often happens during the summer is that that transients shows up most during the summer, mm -hmm. uh, and you could find yourself in a position where, in fact, in uh, in early July, it looks like one of your schools uh, has a number of seats that are available uh, that, that could be filled by someone outside of the district only to find by mid-August that, in fact, there was an influx of a great number of, of uh, students into the district who would no longer have, have seats in, the, in their uh, school of choice. So okay. I guess the, the, the quickest answer to me is I, I think it would take a, a huge, amount of, huge amount of study to map out all of the implications, not a lot of study to say that the short-term implications might might uh, jeopardize some of our kids, the seats that they, they want and need. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Barrow. Well, in, in Glenn, and Mrs. Rogers touches, Ramiro Rogers touches on the crux of the matter, what could be a crux of a matter, a additional budgets, mm -hmm. you know, reimbursement. Mm -hmm. so it's a cost item, huge cost item, I think it could be. So I would support voting against it. Mm -hmm. Voting for the superintendent's recommendation to vote against it, <laughs> depending on how you frame it. Okay. Leave that to the chair. <laughs> Other questions? The superintendent recommends a negative vote. You're voting yes on the superintendent's recommendation. Correct. I'll make that motion. Motion to adopt the superintendent's recommendation. Take a roll call on the vote, please. Mrs. Crow? Yes. Mrs. D'Angelo? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Mr. Froyo? Yes. Mr. Ivino? Yes. Mrs. Rivera Rogers? Yes. Mr. Altrino? Yes. Mr. Winslow? Yes. Mayor Howard? Yes. At 15.05.
finishes up uh, regular agenda business. We make some points of um, Mr. Froyo. Welcome back. And, uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would just like to say, um, I would just like to wish Mr. Feldman a happy retirement. As we, as everyone in, everyone knows, he was a house principal at Malden High School. I worked with him and also for him. He is a gentleman, always fair. All the students knew if they were, if they did something wrong, they were in trouble. But he, he treated everybody the same way, and I hope he has a happy retirement. Thank you. Well Ms. Vera Rogers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I say the same, Mr. Feldman, you're the best. You will be missed by all. Um, Ms. Caitlin, I wish you the best in your future endeavors and in college and your new experiences and life um, paths that you may follow. And congratulations to the class of 2009. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I also want to uh, both congratulate Mr. Feldman and, uh, on his retirement. I, I met him first through the Malden Rotary Club where he took the initiative to start up the Interact Club at the high school, and now I think there's 80 students involved. So just a phenomenal job he did of connecting up that group, and they do annual polio walks. So his work um, at the high school, will, uh, it's not just going to end when he's leaving. He, it will continue on as a great legacy, as well as as, as a great thing of um, him having a scholarship for uh, a worthy student. So that's really just a great thing. Um, I also want to congratulate the Malden High uh, School class of 2009 and best wishes in your uh, your college careers or, or your other career, um, if that's what you're choosing. I also wanted to say um, I was at, uh, I saw the Into the Woods presented by the Malden, uh, the middle school students at Salem Wood School, and it was a wonderful production. So just a great, uh, um, great show that was put on by um, the school. It was great. So thanks. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. <clears throat> um, also, congratulations to Mr. Feldman and the class of 2009. And today was um, paraprofessional day. So congratulations to all the paraprofessionals. You do a great job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Crow. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to remind everybody that we'll be having our annual Flag Day ceremony on Sunday, um, the 14th, Flag Day. <clears throat> Excuse me, at 5 p.m. at Bell Rock Park. And we'll be featuring Malden High's band in the chorus. Thank you very much. Mr. Altrino. Thank you, Mr. Uh, not only do I want to thank Mr. Feldman, but all those members of the Malden Public Schools, faculty, staff, and um, any employee uh, happy retirement or those that are moving on to other districts, we wish them well and thank them for their service. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Duff. Yes, sir. Uh, as well, I'd like to congratulate all of our graduates. Whether you're going on to college, career, or service, I wish you the best of luck, happy and healthy. I'd also like to say congratulations to all of our retirees. Uh, there are many out there that we all know, Mr. Feldman, Mr. Paul Hebert, uh, not to single out anyone in particular, but as the parent of a kindergarten uh, student, I would like to spe send special recognition to Miss Judge of the BB School. We all remember our kindergarten teacher because of the magic they bring, and there are none more magical than Miss Judge. Again, two colleagues from the Lincoln School. I go back with Mr. Feldman more years than I care to remember when he was in 206 and I was across the hall in 202. Uh, he's beyond a gentleman. He is dedicated. He's professional. He's just a kind, kind-hearted man. And anybody that knows the story of the young lady who was almost killed in an auto accident um, very tragically when she was uh, in the seventh grade and the work that Mr. Feldman did and helping really to save her life. Uh, it's a story that will bring a tear to your eye, but it's a story that Fred doesn't go around telling, but he just, he lives the example of, of just a wonderful human being who's got a heart of gold. And there may be somebody there that will be replacing Fred, but it's going to be hard uh, to do his job, but it's going to be very difficult to replace him and to, to fill the shoes that, that, that walk the corridors of the Boyle House for these many years. He's just a tremendous guy, along with Paul and Mary, a colleague from the Lincoln, and all of our retirees, and a wonderful job, and a congratulations to the class on how well they conducted themselves yesterday. What a wonderful group of young men and young women 
who uh, did the city of Malden and Malden High School proud. Thank you. Just that, you know, not much more the chair can say about those things. True professionals, Mr. Feldman in particular. I want to thank the bands for participating in the Memorial Day exercises. They uh, each year do an outstanding job, the uh, youngest band, um, middle school band, and the high school band. So we thank them for taking the time out of that um, holiday weekend to help the community recognize the contribution of those who served in the armed services. Seeing no other points of business, we'll adjourn till the next meeting. Motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.